and um, Byron Riley has graciously volunteered to trade rooms of the historian and the assessor, so the assessors will have more room. Thank you. Uh, planning board, uh, I don't see Kevin. Anybody have a report? Uh, I haven't received anything from Kevin. I had a oh, meeting, uh, informal meeting with the Whitewaters group last Tuesday, this Tuesday, last, last Tuesday. And it was informal to get what their formal plans are going to be and how many more changes there will be. And as soon as anything is formal, including the DOT, it will be forwarded so that when the public hearing comes up, everybody knows. It was, the meeting was open to the public. There were a couple of residents there. Uh, I attended. Dave stopped. Uh, Claudia stopped. So the town board does know what is basically going on, and any changes will be reported. Uh, code enforcement officer, everybody is there, so it was open, and there was a lot of good information by the Whitewaters group. Thank you. Uh, I believe you have something for our very pregnant uh, uh, zoning board chair. Well, I have. No longer, she had her baby. She had, I had oh, did she? Baby girl. I had a note here that she may not be here because of going to maternity board. Uh, they said keep it short, but the monthly meeting will be held on Wednesday, March 18th at 6 p.m., followed by the continuation of three public hearings. Monthly meeting on February 12th. The public hearings include the request for the variance made by Harold and Sandra Walsh of Raleigh Road and Peter the Delhi of County Route 57. We will also finish our formal interpretation of the zoning order as it related to the Trail of Terrors on Clifford Road. The ZBA, ZBA held two additional public hearings during the month of March scheduled for Wednesday, March 25th and 7 p.m. The first one is for a request for a seven-foot area variance by Mr. Willard looks like Raleigh of Maple Ave. The second request is by the Planning Board for a formal interpretation of the zoning ordinances related to commercial parking lots. And the ZBA met with zoning attorney Scott Chaffee recently for further training on area variances and formal interpretation of the zoning ordinance. Gene Conway, Chairman. Byron and I will make get copies made. You will have them. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. I, I want to make a statement that uh, I've only been in office three months, but I am very, very impressed by the work and caliber of people we have on the uh, planning board and the uh, zoning board. Very impressive. And uh, I commend them for all their good work. <coughs> they do a lot of it, a lot of it. Uh, Building Inspector Dan. Uh, during the month of February, we issued one trailer permit uh, for $103, one uh, chimney permit for $20, uh, one alteration for $20, and one addition for $176. Uh, total permits for the month of February was four, total for the year nine. Uh, that puts us one below last year at the end of February. Uh, Total fees taken in for the month of February, $754, or I'm sorry, $319 for a yearly total of $754. That's uh, $500 above last year at this time, uh, mainly because we raised the building permits. Uh, last year when we raised the permit fees, we didn't raise them until June, so that's why it looks like we're coming out so far ahead of uh, last year as far as the fees go. Uh, under inspections, eight new construction, 12 zoning, five fire safety, and 10 site inspections for a total of 35 for the month and 69 for the year. Uh, also, on April 4th, here at the town hall at 10 a.m., um, my office is going to put on a, a small seminar on 
the building permit procedure process. Uh, it's going to be a step-by-step -step, uh, deal where it takes you from your initial application, what you have to have for a complete application. It'll take you up and through the construction process, which type of inspections you're supposed to have for uh, during the course of your construction uh, up until your point of uh, your certificate for occupancy. Uh, I think it'll be very valuable to anybody that's contemplating any building in the town this year. Um, the process has gotten a lot more complex now than, than it used to be. You could walk in off the street and hand your money over and get a permit and that was it. You can't do that anymore. There's a lot of state requirements in, in regards to blueprints and so forth. Uh, people need to prepare a little bit farther ahead uh, for this permit process. So it's, it's hoped that this uh, seminar will point this out to them. Uh, it's going to be basically more or less informal. We'll cover the topics, answer any questions at, at any point in time that anybody has. Hopefully, people will take advantage of it. Thank you. Hey, Dan. I don't see Diane here. Does it? I guess just a very brief. Okay, thank yeah. you, Jim. First, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank Bob Kirby for keeping the dog kennel open and clean so we can get into feed and take care of the dogs that are in there because it's been a very tricky three or four days and uh, he's done a marvelous job doing that. Uh, also, uh, we have quite a few dogs in the kennel. Some we've had over two weeks. The problem is Jack Woods, who does the uh, euthanization for us, uh, hasn't been able to take them. He'll be able to take them at the end of next week and uh, those dogs that are past the limit will be taken there and, and euthanized. Uh, that's, ba that's basically it. That's all I have. Thanks, Jim. Under, uh, excuse me, highway department is next. Uh, Byron, did you get a report from uh, Bob or no? For the month of February, 16 days plowing, seven days cutting trees, two days erecting signs, and four days patching holes. Wages for February 92, 26,298.95. Maintenance, repairs, and supplies, $15,422.84 for a total of Forty-one seven twenty-one seventy-nine. Wait till you hear the one for March. <laughs> I would like the minutes to show the excellent job that the highway superintendent and crew is doing. The crew is short-handed, but I think they're doing an outstanding job. And I'd like the minutes to show that. Um. Under other, Jim, do you have a? Yes. Uh, I met uh, in February with the Recreation Committee for a meeting. At that time, we discussed numerous different goals, objectives, uh, visions, whatever you wish to say. Um, and at that time, my emphasis was on a summer rec program. After talking with the committee, uh, I modified my position greatly. And I think that we will have an expanded recreation program in the township that will encompass hopefully both of the, uh, of the feelings and beliefs of, of both groups. Now, I, uh, Randy and his committee have been meeting, that's Randy Bennett, Chairman, uh, President of the uh, Recreation Committee, and he has uh, been meeting with his group and he and I had a phone conversation on Wednesday and what we basically agreed to is uh, the following format. Uh, I believe that I have to have a director, a person who is paid for by the town and who is in charge of that particular program. Now, until such time as we advertise for a director and have a director on board, uh, Randy and I are going to be working out the fine points of the rec program. Uh, Randy and I basically, it's my understanding of the phone, that we agreed that I will work with the committee when we come up with the uh, job description for the recreation director, and that uh, I feel that we are quite close in what we believe we can do. Now, we will, I believe, advertise a particular salary. Randy's feelings are that a lot of that money uh, that we have budgeted, we do have $1,200 budgeted for a salary for a director, should go into program, and 
my intent is to advertise a floating salary, and if someone wishes to assume the responsibilities at a reduced salary, but accept those responsibilities, then uh, that certainly would be amenable to me. Uh, Randy wanted to get the program going, and I totally agreed with him. And some of the small ticket items, uh, I told him there's no problem he can go ahead with. For example, he wanted to do a swimming activity at the YMCA. That's no problem. We can upfront the money there. The money's available. Uh, that's $40. Items which required only busing, certainly uh, I had no problem with those. One point of concern that we did have was the issue of a teen dance. Uh, my, I have a concern regarding uh, chaperoning and insurance coverage and so forth. I've talked with Claudia. She's uh, our representative, uh, the insurance person on the board now, and she's going to check all of the concerns that I have. Randy wasn't planning on doing this until later in the year, so uh, if it's not until July or August, he'll give us plenty of time to check on all of the concerns that I have. Right at the present moment, my own personal feeling is I, I have uh, some apprehension there, but I, and I won't, I'll be honest with you, but I'm not going to say that my mind can't be changed. Uh, also, Randy said that there is a tour that they want to take with Onondaga Lake tours where uh, the boat on Onondaga Lake would be uh, chartered, and they have to reserve that ahead. I told Randy, go ahead and do that. We, got, we had the money for the tickets. There was no problem there. Uh, I've also talked with them because one of the concerns that I had was uh, that the a lot of the field trips were sedentary. And my concern is and was that it be a more participatory program. And we have uh, developed uh, somewhat of a participatory program, and this is where we've had the meeting of the minds. The field trips certainly are on within the confines of our budget. Participatory activities, however, certain things such as Randy talked to me about a, a woodworking activity, a birdhouse type building situation, some crafts. He talked about wildflowers, that uh, some people were going to do some activities uh, in that area, some things with paper mache. Uh, kite flying was another uh, activity that they mentioned. Uh, Easter egg painting and or hunt. All of these things we have uh, added with funds and facilities to facilitate. So there's no, no problem there. A major issue, or a major item that uh, uh, I felt uh, and see happening is what we call JOAD. Now JOAD is the Junior Olympic Archery Development Program, for those that didn't, uh, weren't familiar because I didn't know what JOAD was. And uh, Colleen Scott contacted me, and uh, Colleen is here, and if any of you have questions afterwards, you certainly can uh, ask them of her. Um, but basically, uh, this type of program uh, could be an ongoing program where we could have the younger people in the uh, community starting to become interested in archery. Uh, there is a program whereby uh, there's a starter situation where the materials and kits <coughs> and uh, necessary equipment can be uh, given by the Junior Olympic Committee. and. Colleen did, I think, get some information, and uh, I think she'd be willing to share it during the public comment section. Maybe she would, Colleen. And she, I asked her to contact Randy because I want to work. I want to continue working with the committee. Uh, I feel that uh, Randy has a, a good committee, and I'm very, very happy with volunteers. And the volunteers seem to be they seem to be a dedicated, committed group. And it seems to me, though, that we can certainly work together and expand and have a, a very positive. Uh, recreation program. So that's where we are right at the present moment. The field trips are on. Randy's going to be scheduling them. Uh, and within the next couple of months, we'll have a director on board. And then that person can be making the report. Uh, or at least I hope we'll have a director on board. And that's basically it. All right. Uh, under new business, uh, do we want to have a resolution to advertise for this? Uh, position at a salary of twelve hundred dollars the the only thing was and the reason I didn't bring that forward now was I wanted to meet with Randy and I wanted to meet with that committee or have him from it back to me so that we could have a job description so we would know in the paper exactly what we were advertising for it would be so vague if we simply said athlete, uh, an athletic director or something that 
might not be uh, fair. So I'd rather wait till next month to, to do that. If, and I'll, and I'll, it's, it doesn't matter, whichever you want to do. Uh, I think, uh, Jim, just to, just to get things going, uh, we should advertise for a uh, recreation director at a uh, uh, salary of, of $1,200 and then work out the uh, job description uh, because I'd rather not put this off another month. I'd like to get it going right away. The up to $1,200. Up to $1,200. Up to, up to $1, as long as we have the floating salary in there, that would be So well, that, then it becomes up to the, the whatever he wants to do. Up to the, to the group, and we'll, we'll work out right. the, the right. yeah, job description to be given later. Yeah, okay. That's fine with me. Okay. We'll you need that. a motion? Or? No, that, that'll be done under new business. Okay, good. While we're on the subject, could I ask a question? Uh, Randy himself did apply for this position for this year. And uh, he was at our uh, interview, and we interviewed him. He's worked with the program for the last two years. And I'm just wondering why he's not being considered for that position himself. Uh, I was under the impression, and he certainly is being uh, considered, I would think. But the concern that I have is that the letter came in after the time that they were accepted. Uh, I don't know who interviewed, but I certainly did not interview him. Well, the town board last year did. Well, this is the new town board, so this town well, board. You were invited to that meeting, you didn't attend. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> the, uh, <clears throat> the, I have never seen the letter. If, if he has a letter in, uh, and I believe in. you got one, didn't you, Byron? No, I did not. Well, we, we got a copy of it. I don't know. Who, I don't I know who else has it, but it never was filed in my office. Well, he showed up for letter. the interview. And we did interview him, and he's an excellent candidate. He's worked with the program for two years, and he even offered to do this for one dollar if it need be, just so the money could be diverted to the program itself. So I think you should seriously consider him for that position. My favorite answer was at the last meeting, too, that you were asked. I, I understand that. I'm just saying that the advertisement was not, uh, the uh, application was not received within the time frame that we had established. Certainly not excluding Randy. I'm certainly opening it up for anyone in the area that wishes to apply for that position. It was not appointed, therefore, that uh, that letter very possibly will accept Randy. In fact, my intent, possibly, well, I don't know yet. I can't Jim, comment. Yes. Uh, if we can, if we can have that letter of application, if that is is on hand, uh, I feel that uh, under new business, unless Anybody here has any objection or out there, uh, we can make that uh, make that appointment. Would that be acceptable? Do you have any reservations? Yes. Yes. And the reservation that I have is the letter was not received during the uh, may, may I say that this is my turn and this is not open to public comment at this point. My concern is that letters are to be in by a certain time. Letters of application were, being, were to be submitted. That letter, to the best of my recollection, was not received and I would prefer to, to wait. I don't have a problem with appointing Randy. It's just the formality and I want to live within the confines of the uh, law. In defense of that, Jim, uh, the reason he didn't apply on time is because everyone was under the impression that uh, Randy Cooper was uh, going to reapply, and we didn't know till the day of that he wasn't, and certainly no one wanted to compete with him for that position. So when he found out that he hadn't applied, then he put his application in because he didn't want it to be left blank. So that's the only reason it was late. Otherwise, he would have had it in way ahead of time. So it's a formality, but I think it's something we should uh, overlook in this case. If, if everyone else is in agreement that we can waive that, I, I would go with it. I don't have a problem. But I want to make sure, we just want to write that if we do it this time, the next time a letter comes in and it's late, then we say, well, we did yeah. it. Right. Let's, uh, let's move on. Okay. Well, Mr. Supervisor, before we get into other business, yes. uh, I'd like to ask that so that it doesn't conflict with our schedule that all the town board be notified when we're rescheduling or scheduling the meeting. I mean, I got home from work and found out that it was Saturday morning. Uh, I don't know if any or all of the, any part of the town board was asked about when they were available for the meeting or not, but it would be nice to know that so that 
you have other obligations, you might not be at the meeting. Well, uh, Jess, I tell you, I was here in this building at noontime and uh, made the decision when that snow was really blowing around here and there was absolutely no way we could have a meeting uh, on Thursday night. So I made that decision and when you, when you cancel a meeting, you also should reschedule it. And I rescheduled it and called your home immediately and Howard's home immediately and left word that it was rescheduled for Saturday morning. That was the only thing I so could do. Actually, the meeting was uh, rescheduled basically on your decision. Correct. And then you notified all the town board. Right. Because when you call well, in. I know that. Yeah. You, sh yeah. you should have the new meeting rescheduled. But if I'd had other obligations, I wouldn't have been here today. This is. I would say, just in defense of that, I did have another obligation. I had to cancel it and change it. I was not informed of it either. But, uh, I think we all may have, but I think and just as a rule in the future, I would suggest maybe uh, polling us to see if we can attend, because uh, you could have been sitting here alone today and not even known it. But it's very tough to call uh, radio stations uh, and television stations and tell them you're canceling one, you sh and re you should be able to tell them when you're rescheduled. Yeah, yeah I, I feel the supervisor <laughs> has to have that authority. No, I agree. I'm just saying in the future, if we can do it, I'll yeah, call I us all and ask and make sure we can all be available yeah. for it. This was a, uh, a decision that had to be made very quickly. Now, the only other thing is uh, we have a new computer system coming for the assessor's availability. Right. Uh, this did not need a vote of the town board that we're spending this kind of money. It was mandated that we have such a computer in order to do data collection. And we did receive bids and got, got the appropriate uh, well, I haven't computer. Well, I have copy of the bids, but the only thing I keep hearing that we're mandated on is having an inventory, and I've read nothing on buying a computer, but I'm, we put it in the budget we wanted the computer. But it's just that I see no, I didn't see a copy of any bids. And it would be nice to know ahead of time that the bids were accepted, who was accepted. Any other old business? I have a few items, um, Mr. Supervisor. First of all, I'd like to ask Byron, has local law number three been resubmitted as local law number two? I told Mr. Chatfield when he called me that it was wrong. I have heard nothing from him. Is it his obligation to, to correct that? He filed the original, yes. He's aware that it has to be changed to two and he, he is the one it. that notified me that it had to be changed. Okay. I researched it and called him back and told him that it had to be number two and assumed that he took care of it. Could you check on him and make sure that it has been taken care of this month so that this does get done? Pardon? For sure it has. I met with Scott yesterday on another matter and that was one of the things that he had discussed and was taken care of. Okay. Okay, I also wanted to ask, uh, Mr. Supervisor, last month you mentioned uh, the fact that we were notified back in September of last year that we received a $29,680 revenue check from the state. I'd like to ask when you were made aware of that check coming in. Did you know that last year? Did you just find out this year? Or? I learned it when uh, it was uh, in the newspapers about a month ago. A month ago? It was in the newspaper before we knew about it here? That is correct. And I uh, I didn't feel it was right, and I let uh, Fran Sullivan know that, too. Did we ever receive a letter from the state confirming what was in the newspaper? Yes. Okay. That should have been in our boxes. I think we all should have known about that as soon as you received it. I didn't hear about it. <coughs> that was meeting. subsequent to the uh, newspaper. Okay. Um, but you mentioned that it came September of last year. Uh, could you clarify what you meant by that? I mean, if it came September last year, but you just found out about this month, I'm not quite sure I make sense of that. Well, I asked the uh, uh, our town bookkeeper at what point we received that, and that's the uh, date she gave us. So the bookkeeper received it last year in September, but you didn't really know of it yourself until this year. That's well, something's a little funny here because the town board should have been made aware of it last year. I would, I would have thought so. 
Well, it was, you know, we were preparing a budget and we knew nothing about it. And this is the same book. I don't care the budget, fault. Jeff. It's not your fault. This is the same bookkeep you just increased the salary on, too. Um, I, I think uh, that there ought to be an explanation for this. I'm going to find out why we didn't know about it. Um, since zero got penciled in last year when we had a check for $29,680 in September. The other thing I want to mention, too, is uh, you approved the payment of a bill for Duncan McCaffer of $4,275 uh, to defend the, the judges in a case two years ago. And I'm wondering why we paid $4,275 when last year Don Kitts, uh, I believe he even stated at a meeting that Duncan McCaffer had agreed to lower the cost to around $3,500 because he felt it was a little out of line. Why did we pay the bill? Uh, to the tune of $4,275 when we had negotiated less before that. You're asking me? I, if Don Kitts negotiated it, I can't answer for Don Kitts. Well, uh, it should be in the minutes of our meeting because it was mentioned in a meeting. And I'm surprised that Byron didn't bring it to your attention that it was mentioned because he usually you know, clarifies everything with us when we do make well, a Howard, mistake. that particular bill was discussed in, in front of everybody here, and if that were the case, you should have mentioned it at that time. When that bill was approved and it was discussed here, you should have mentioned that it, it would, should have been negotiated. I agree with an oversight on my part for not mentioning I was concerned at the time with not paying it at all, which I voted against, but uh, it uh, still shouldn't have been paid for that amount of money. Um, also, in, uh, in the letter that he sent us when he um, received his check, he says, I'm sorry that the payment of my fee caused such consternation with the former town board as I tried to get free counsel for the defendants and the board at that time would not retain any. I just want to state for the record that the town board was never offered this from Mr. McCaffer. And uh, if it was offered to anyone, it would have been our judges who never let us know about that because I'm not aware of it. I don't believe you are either, Jess. Um, so just for the record, I want people to know that we did not know any free uh, counsel was being offered. Now we're, we just paid a $4,275 bill. Uh, so I wanted to make that clear. Um, also, you mentioned uh, when the salaries were uh, reinstated, uh, you mentioned that the monies were found to pay for these things, the unauthorized attorney's fee, as well as selectively reinstating certain salaries totaling over $12,000. Uh, I asked at the January meeting where those monies came from, and I, I wanted to know. I haven't heard anything yet, and I'm requesting now publicly that I'd like a full documented report of where this money is coming from, because I don't know where it's coming from. It uh, wasn't in the budget last year, and I'd like to know uh, if we're robbing Peter to pay Paul or what we're doing here as far as where these monies are coming from. So if you could, before the next town board meeting, uh, if you could give me a copy of this and document it in writing where this money came from, and uh, I would appreciate that. Certainly. That's all I have on this whole business. Any, uh, any other old business? I will now entertain public comment on resolutions, and please make it resolutions only. <coughs> the uh, first resolution to be voted upon is resolution number 86, Procurement Policy. It's one of those uh, resolutions that I have to read. Yes. I just have a question on resolution 9290 uh, regarding the, uh, the assessment. Can you tell us if it, how many bids were submitted and, and what they were? Are you going to make that public? Uh, I don't mind answering that, but uh, we'll discuss that. Uh, at the, to that yes. Okay. Under discussion. The uh, resolution number 9286, procurement policy. I'll read this very fast. Whereas section 104B of the general municipal law requires every town to adopt internal policies and procedures governing all procurement of goods and services not subject to the bidding reg requirements of GML section 103 or any other law, and whereas comments have been solicited from those officers of the town involved with procurement, now therefore be it resolved that the town of Bondi does hereby adopt the following procurement policies and procedures. 
Guideline one, every prospective purchase of goods or services shall be evaluated to determine the applicability of GML section 103. Every town officer, board, department head, or other personnel with the requisite purchasing authority here and after purchaser shall estimate the cumulative amount of the items of supply or equipment needed in a given fiscal year. That estimate shall include the canvas of other town departments in past history to determine the likely yearly value of the commodity to be acquired. The information gathered and conclusions reached shall be documented and kept with the file or other documentation supporting the purchase activity. Guideline two, all purchases of A, supplies or equipment which shall will exceed $10,000 in the fiscal year or public works contracts over $20,000 shall be formally bid pursuant to GML section 103. Guideline three, all estimated purchases of less than $10,000 but greater than $3,000 require a written request for a proposal RFP and written facts quotes from three vendors. Less than $3,000 greater than $1,000 require an oral request for the goods and oral slash facts quotes from two vendors. Less than $1,000 greater than $250 are left to the discretion of the purchaser. All estimated public works contracts of less than $20,000 greater than $10,000 require a written RFP and fax slash proposals from three contractors. Less than $10,000 greater than $3,000 require a written RFP and fax slash proposals from two contractors. Less than $3,000 greater than $500 are left to the discretion of the purchaser. All written RFP shall describe the desired goods quantity and the particulars of delivery. The purchaser shall compile a list of all vendors from whom written slash fax slash oral quotes have been requested and the written slash fax slash oral quotes offered. All information gathered and complying with the procedures of this guideline shall be preserved and filed with the documentation supporting the subsequent purchase or public works contract. Guideline four, the lowest responsible proposal or quote shall be awarded the purchase or public works contract unless purchaser prepares a written justification providing reasons why it is in the best interest of the town and its taxpayers to make an award to other than the low bidder. If a bidder is not deemed responsible, facts supporting that judgment shall also be documented and filed with a record supporting the procurement. Guideline five, a good faith effort shall be made to purchase, to, excuse me, to obtain the required number of proposals or quotations. If the purchaser is unable to obtain the required number of proposals or quotations, the purchaser shall document the attempt made at obtaining the proposals. In no event shall the inability to obtain the proposals or quotes be a bar to the procurement. Guideline six, except when directed by the town board, no solicitation of written proposals or quotations, quotations shall be required under the following circumstances. A, acquisition of professional services. B, emergency. C, sole source situations. D, goods purchased from agencies who are blind or severely handicapped. E, goods purchased from correctional facilities. F, goods purchased from another governmental agency. G, goods purchased at auction. H, goods purchased for less than $250. I, public works contracts for less than $500. Guideline seven, this policy shall be reviewed annually by the town board at its organizational meeting or as soon thereafter as is reasonably practical. A motion to accept this resolution. Second. I'll second it for discussion. Um, I, I applaud this effort. I think it's a good idea. Um, I'm a little concerned about the dollar amounts that we've got in here. Where did we get these, this document this, from? This is a state mandated procurement policy. Is this the model that they wanted to go by? But this is, this was furnished up to us by Dennis Hawthorne Jr. who has furnished the same, uh, policy to other boards in the uh, area. They, it's a state law. Yes. Yes, but your guidelines can be stricter than state. Right. And I disagree heavily with the amount of dollars we're talking here. I mean, you were giving people up to $20,000 that they can, without bid and just approval. And we lowered this for a reason so we could keep control of what was going on. And now we're talking about raising it, so basically we don't have control of what's going on. I have to agree with Jesse. I think that you know we're, we're being pretty liberal with the money here. Um, I think we probably should have discussed this a little bit before we brought this before the, the board to approve. Um, I don't know why we didn't do that. I think we should have sat down together and discussed these options as far as the figures go. And with that, I'd suggest we table this for our next meeting and maybe sit down and talk about these figures a little bit. This procurement policy should have been done basically at the organizational meeting or uh, as soon as possible in January. Uh, I have no problem with tabling it, uh, but I, I don't think it would serve any useful purpose. Well, if we approve it as is, it's, uh, 
like I say, it's a pretty liberal uh, use of the money here, and I'm, I'm just concerned about that. I think we should tighten it up a little bit myself. If you want to discuss it now, I, I'm willing to do that. Uh, if you're satisfied with it yourselves. Uh, I'm satisfied with it. I, I think there, there are enough safeguards in there to, to protect, the, uh, protect the town. Can you tell us what the limit is now? What, I, what is the limit now? I really don't know. We said to limit anything uh, that you're going to buy over three thousand dollars had to be bid. We come in the state audit, come in and uh, hollered about a project that went to cost. They, as far as they were concerned, it, it, we were told it was two projects, but as far as they were concerned, it was one project and it come over eleven thousand dollars and it was not bid. And they wrote us up two years ago or three years ago on an audit and. Uh, we lowered, at that time, I think the state was like five or $7,000 buy-in without bidding, and we lowered it to three so that we could keep control of what was going on. May I see the, Jess, I have a question of you. Isn't that what this says? No. I mean, well, well, tell me what the problem is. If it says it's less than 20 but greater than 10, it requires a written RFP and fax proposals from three contractors. Isn't that a bid? No, you can get three contractors and write up proposals without even having a bid. It's like saying we can have a private little meeting, get three contractors, write up proposals, and one of you is going to get the bid, as long as the town board agrees to it. That's the safeguard. If you get three three proposals and the town board votes on it, I think that's that's the safeguard. Nothing can be done by a single person. Yeah, I see that as a as a major safeguard here. I think this tightens it up, Jess. I don't think so. Like I said, you can set up a project, and if you keep it under twenty thousand dollars, you get three contractors to say, "Yeah, I'll do it for this." You get it in writing. The town board agrees that it's not bid. You only got three contractors involved. In other words, we could get into like fixing projects. We want to get out and open about it. A copy of this Tuesday would have been nice. I know you mentioned you're going to be having this policy, but a copy of it would have been nice for us to look over the last two days, and maybe we would have been more prepared to make a decision right now, too. I believe this is in the January town topics that we all got a copy of, basically. It's, it's, it's right in the magazine. It's one of the major articles. I don't have it, I don't have it with me, but I, I believe it's there. I think there are sufficient safeguards written into this that would preclude any underhanded uh, buying, Jess. Well, I was happy the one we got. Anything over $3,000 has to be bid. But that's just my opinion. Hey, that's a valid opinion. Any other discussion? Byron, would you poll the board? <clears throat> Councilman Ridgway. Aye. Councilman Rose. Again, I think it's a, a good uh, uh, motion here, but I'm, I'm not satisfied with the figure, so I'm going to vote no. Councilwoman Smart. Aye. Councilman Warner. I feel the same, but the figures ought to be changed, so I'll vote no. Supervisor McFarland. Aye. The next resolution is number 87. Move that bids for services, equipment, and or other advertised procurement be received and publicly open, opened at 4 p.m. on the Tuesday afternoon preceding the regular town board meeting unless the advertisement specifically states otherwise. The bids will be made available for review and discussion at the Tuesday evening work session unless the advertisement specifically states otherwise. This motion supersedes the motion passed on June 13, 1991, requiring that bids be opened at the regular town board meeting. Do I have it moved? I so move. Second again for discussion. Thank you. Um, I, I believe I was the one that made the motion uh, in the past to maybe open at the town board meeting. And the reason I did that is because I had someone come to me and tell me, well, gee, you open them up at 4 o'clock when I'm working. I can't be there to see how it's done. Uh, how do I know that someone's not rigging the bids? Well, I'm not accusing anybody of ever doing that or having the potential of doing that, but uh, that is a possibility. 
And uh, that was the reason we made the motion before, because no one does know. If only one contractor is here and one town board member or one town clerk or whatever, uh, and if it's a local contractor, well, who's to say where he couldn't open all the bid and then change his bid? We don't know that because the public's not there to witness it. And that's why we made the motion to open them up at the town board meeting where the public's here to witness it, and we know that uh, everything's done on top of the table. Um, once again, I'm not saying or accusing anybody of ever having done that, but this was, this was to avoid that situation, which I'm sure has happened in other towns, other places. So that's why uh, we had the policy the way it was before. The concern that I would have, though, Howard, is that the way that it's done now, if you open the bid at the town board meeting, then you have to go through, do all of your discussion, do all of your thinking immediately. If it's something that you that you need to have, a piece of highway equipment, something like that, you could actually postpone for a month because most of those things, uh, in some cases, you'd have to have time to uh, think through and to make a decision about. My concern is that I, I don't have time. I have to be given something and act immediately on that if it's, if it's opened here. I, I don't have the ability, I have the ability to make that decision if it's done on the Tuesday before and the Tuesday meeting is public and it's at four, it's at four o'clock, it is open to the public, people can be here. If there are two or three contractors bidding, I would get, I would assume that if I really wanted that bid and I felt there might be a chance of collusion or of coercion in some, in some manner, I certainly would be there and I think your contractors would. And, I think this gives us more of an opportunity to make a reasonable assessment of the uh, bids as they are received. Well, that hasn't been the case in the past. We haven't had all the contractors show up or any townspeople for that matter, and that's what I'm concerned about. Uh, also, the, that's why we have the ability to table things, uh, and we can always have special meetings to approve them two days later if we want to, uh, so I don't see that being a real problem. I think that the biggest problem is the fact that the people should be witness to it. And uh, they, they can't be here at 4 o'clock. Most of them, they work. The contractors work. They have to take off work to be here and so on. I, I think it'd be more convenient for all, everyone concerned to do it the way we used to do it. Well, if not, why don't we strike a compromise and change the 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Tuesday night where the town, whole town board is there and we open them. And the public is invited to them. It's open. That sounds reasonable to me. The... Uh, Bids are to the town clerk uh, addressed to him. He would be, it would be necessary for the town clerk to be uh, present at the uh, 7 p.m. meeting. Uh, to record the bids. To record the bids. Uh, I will change that motion if, if uh, I would hit to the 7 o'clock. Would that be to 7 o'clock? Is that what you would change to? Yes. I would accept that with no problem. Howard? Thank you. That sounds really good. And then we need a motion to amend. And I would move to amend for Bruce Lucian number 9287, second line to read and publicly open at 7 p.m. on the Tuesday afternoon preceding the verbiage to continue as written. Uh, actually, you strike, you strike out quite a bit there, but I, uh, the, re the wording, the amendment to it will, in sense, state that it will be opened at 7 p.m. Uh, I wouldn't, I know, I wouldn't strike out anything. All okay. I did is change. Well, your, your, it changes it to 7. It would be exactly the same verbiage, I would think. No, excuse me. I'm sorry, yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm second here. Are you still going to accept these at 4 o'clock and then open them at 7? Uh, got it. Uh, okay, that, that, that's a way to word it. Okay, <laughs> good point, Byron. Move that bids for services, equipment, and or other advertised procurement be received by 4 p.m. Strike out publicly open. Yeah at 4 p.m. on the Tuesday afternoon preceding the regular town board meeting, unless the advertisement specifically states otherwise. The bids will be publicly open and made available for review. Got it? The bids will be... I was trying to find a night on the bottom of Start to the beginning of it. Let's start. Okay. 
move that bids for services, equipment, and or other advertised procurement be received by 4 p.m. on the Tuesday afternoon preceding the regular Excuse me, on the Tuesday afternoon preceding the regular town board meeting, unless the advertisement specifically states otherwise. The bids will be publicly opened and made available for review and discussion at the Tuesday evening work session. Okay? And so on. Okay? You have, you have to take actually two votes. You vote okay. amendment, then you vote the, uh, motion as amendment. The first vote will be on the amendment. Byron, will you pull the board? Councilman Ridgeway. Aye. Councilman Rose. Aye. Councilwoman Smart. Aye. Councilman Warner. Aye. Supervisor McFarland. Aye. Now you're on the motion. Now on the motion as as amended. Uh, Byron, will you pull the town board? Councilman Ridgeway. Aye. Councilman Rose. Aye. Councilwoman Smart. Aye. Councilman Warner. Aye. Supervisor McFarland. Aye. Resolution number 88. Move that the town clerk be authorized to advertise for bids to have a new roof installed on the Balney Municipal Center. Speci specifications for same may be picked up in the town clerk's office during regular business hours. All bids must be received in the town clerk's office by 4 p.m. on April 7, 1992, at which time they will be publicly opened. The town board reserves the right to accept any or all bids. Move to um, accept, and then I'll have to move to amend. I'll move to, I'll move to accept, and I've got to move to amend. Because your times are wrong. <laughs> well, the problem. Okay, I move for discussion. Do I have a second? I'll second it for discussion. Now I move to amend because of the situation of, of the preceding motion supersedes what the language in this one is. Pardon? I said this would be fun. <laughs> and the, the previous motion supersedes the data here uh, because they will not. Uh, at which time it would be publicly open. That has to be struck that we opened at uh, 7 p.m. at the board meeting. <coughs> now we're received by 4 p.m. That's absolutely correct. Okay. Strike out at which time they will be open, at which time they will be publicly open, and it will read, uh, they will be, I see, bids will be, I'm going to read from above, the bids will be publicly open, uh, and available for review and discussion at the Tuesday evening work session. All right? Mm -hmm. 7 p.m. Thank you. Can I ask if the specifications have been drawn up yet? And who's going to be doing they them? They are the same specifications as last, last year. year. Yes. First, we'll vote on the amendment. Uh, Byron, will you call the board? Councilman Ridgeway. Aye. Councilman Rose. Aye. Councilwoman Smart. Aye. Councilman Warner. Aye. Supervisor McFarland. Aye. Resolution number 89 move that the highway superintendent be authorized to purchase on state bid one John Deere front end loader for a net total amount with trade-in and including extras of $74,860. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll move that and do I hear a second? I'll second it. Uh, discussion? Under discussion. Uh, there is money in the budget for this. Uh, do we have a copy of 
that he handed us Tuesday night of this machine. The other thing is, I'm getting back to, I know that five or six years ago we purchased a new front end loader, a cat, and because this other one was getting old, and my question was then, why do we need two? And he said, because the other one is wearing out. Now that, I guess, is wore out, and he is still saying we need two. And my question is, why do we need two uh, front end loaders? We're talking about spending $74,860 because the money's there for machinery. Why don't we use this money to pay off other machinery? Uh, I don't, with the roads we have, they're all built. Why do we need two front end loaders? I still don't see it, but. The concern that Bob voiced to me was that with the salt shed and with the necessity for loading with this machine down, we're now limited, we have one loader available to us. Uh, if something happens to the other one, we have to rent equipment, which is not cost effective. It cost us. It would cost a great deal more. They've been using. They've been using the two, and this was uh, what Bob emphasized to me. I wish he was here to further speak for himself, but he did tell me that. Well, any piece of equipment you put in a salt shed in a period of I wouldn't give it eight years, that's not going to be serviceable, serviceable because it's in a salt shed. But I still. That's a lot of money. The other thing, uh, last month when we were signing bills, Bob mentioned that he was concerned about being able to meet his payroll, and uh, I'm sure he wasn't anticipating this weather in March, so uh, I, I hope he doesn't run short there to sacrifice for this. Um, I think maybe with that in mind, it'd be a good idea to hold off on this until we know what our expenses are for other things. It is in the budget, but that money can be moved to other not out of machinery. It can't be moved out of equipment to payroll, no, because payroll's general. It cannot be moved to machinery, but it can be used to pay off machinery mm -hmm. instead of uh, bonding with some more. So, sorry, uh, uh, our superintendent of highways isn't here uh, to answer that. Uh, I'd Any other discussion? I just would have no problem doing this. I really, I really firmly believe we need this this piece of equipment, and Bob convinced me that we needed it because of the uh, situation. I, I totally agree with Jess that uh, with a piece of equipment working in the salt shed, uh, doing what this is doing, it, it wears out more quickly. Uh, we wear out the cat, we wear out the equipment, but that's one of the things that happens when you're taking care of highways. Equipment wears out. The uh, mayor was supposed to alleviate that problem last year. So he said the conveyor that we bought from last year was supposed to extend the life of this. Well, he, he, he thought he had some more mileage left in this last year. Now I guess we don't. Uh, he keeps repair records on every piece of equipment mm -hmm. out there, and uh, I don't remember the figures by heart, but the figures that he has on what it's been costing to maintain this was the reason why he um, is making this request. Any other comment from the board? Byron, will you uh, call the board? Councilman Ridgway. Aye. Councilman Rose. No. Councilwoman Smart. Aye. Councilman Warner. No. Supervisor McFarland. Aye. Next resolution, number 90, move to accept the proposal dated February 28, 1992, from Assessment Services Company, Cortland, New York, to provide data collection and revaluation services for the town of Balney for the amount of $99,750, and that a formal contract be entered into. It is understood that the project schedule calls for project commencement on April 1, 1992, with completion by July 1, 1993. Somebody move that? Okay, I asked previously before he started to answer a question on this. Oh, uh, under discussion. I second. Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion on that, please. Full, full move, right? Full move. 
Uh, first of all, uh, the last couple of months you've claimed that uh, if we didn't complete it by June 1st of 1992, we we're going to be fined so much per day per parcel, and now we're getting someone else to do it. They don't have to have it done until 1993 of July 1st? The state will take what we are doing into account. I said and that before when I said we could still meet the 1992 deadline and that they would take that into account. So I don't understand the difference here. They, they have, they are willing to, well, not actually have said this, but they will not take any action if we begin as per the schedule. By paying someone to do it, you mean? Yes. I, so if we did it ourselves, they wouldn't give us that privilege, but by hiring someone to do it, they're extending the, the time. We could not do it in sufficient time. Impossible. Well, not by 1992, but 93 we might be able to. Well, not our three part-time assessors could not in any way, shape, or form do a complete revaluation in that period of time. Okay, the, the revaluation, is that costing about $27 a parcel to do? Uh, top of the twenty-some dollars for uh, the data? Because it figures out it's about forty dollars a parcel, the, the figures that we were discussing in the amount we're bidding or bonding for. Um, is, it, is the reval part of that around twenty dollars, do you know? How much they, they, they do it for a total price. Okay, we're up here on forty dollars a parcel. Um, okay, because when we got bids a year ago, it was only around twenty dollars a parcel just to do the data collection, not the reval. I'd be surprised if the rebell is worth $20 more, but uh, that's the going price. Uh, the other thing I'm concerned about, what is the prevailing interest rate we're going to be paying on this bond over a five-year period? Do you have those figures? I do not. Do you know what the interest rate itself is? I have no idea. And we're going to vote on this without even knowing that? <coughs> I would say yes. Okay, go ahead. Although I would like to know what Marie was going to ask yeah, during the public comment. Okay, um, I asked you earlier before you started the resolution if I could comment. You said I have to wait. My question is, you said you have bids here. I'd like to know how many bids you received for this and who they're from. Because the bids were not read publicly. Okay. We, there were 11, uh, we were given 11 different companies that could do this data collection. We sent out requests for bids to all 11. Six refused, uh, turned down our request, we received five. The range of bids was from 99750 from assessment services company uh, to a high of $143,750 by coal uh, layer Trumbull company. The, uh, this assessment services company was the lowest. Uh, the next one was uh, 117,586. Uh, there was one for 107,865, 118,000 uh, from another. So this was of the five the lowest bid, and they have good credentials. Can you tell me what the county got? They did uh, Fulton. And Janet LaSalle is very pleased with this outfit that is that is going to do our uh, collection. Any other discussion? Byron, would you poll the board? Councilman Ridgeway. Aye. Councilman Rose. Absolutely not. Councilwoman Smart. Aye. Councilman Warner. No. Supervisor McFarland. Aye. The uh, last resolution is resolution number 91. Whereas preliminary testing of the soil for possible contamination on the site leased by the town of Volney from the Volney Fi Volunteer Fire Corporation for use as a park slash playground has proved inconclusive and whereas certain individuals wish to continue testing to conclusively prove the integrity of the land for park use, and whereas should the results of further testing reveal sufficient contamination to require reporting to the DEC, therefore resolve the town of Volney shall contract 
and pay for additional environmental testing to determine the suitability of the lease site or park slash playground. Further, all costs for any required remedial action as determined by the DEC shall be the responsibility of the owner of the site, the Balney Volunteer Fire Corporation. I heard it moved. So moved. I'll second for discussion. Um, first of all, Section 3D of the lease agreement with the Balney Fire Corporation clearly states that the property is accepted as is and that all costs of developing and maintaining be the responsibility of the leasee, uh, which is us. Now, uh, I interpret developing to mean whatever needs to be done to that property to put it in order for a park. Uh, I do not believe this is a responsibility of the fire corporation. They and, and, uh, were very uh, generous to us in giving us that property, and I'm sure they can't afford this type of process. And if we're going to continue with this, I say we continue with it at our expense. If uh, you choose not to do that, I can only assume the political will here is the only way, uh, our only uh, thing in the way of getting this park uh, completed. The uh, responsibility for any uh, remedial cleanup would be the responsible uh, responsibility of the landowner. Uh, not according to our contract, Mr. Supervisor. Well, I mean, it's up to us to decide. We can make that interpretation, but I believe it should be our responsibility. That would be nice to assume what could potentially be a major responsibility. Well, and we as the owner of the land, it's major. Right now, it only says it may be significant, which doesn't mean it is significant. That's true. So I say we, we don't go, have the funds either, Howard. To, to uh, we have five thousand in the park fund right now. I mean, if we have to pay another five hundred dollars to go a little bit further, I don't think that's too much since we've already got ten thousand invested in that park uh, to dump it on the firemen and make them make that decision. I think is uh, effectively killing the whole project. Any other discussion by the board? The, the only concern I have, Dave, is if we don't have the money in there, and I don't know, I read the, the lease agreement the same way you, you do, and Howard, when you're talking about it, it is, I see it as making improvements and so forth. Uh, when you get into a, 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 an environmental cleanup, my understanding is it's the responsibility of the property owner, not the person that leases the land. And that's the If we that's choose what, to make it their responsibility, I, I'm saying we shouldn't. I don't know that, well, I don't know that we can, uh, that we can do that. If you say that the town is going to accept the responsibility, re, and basically what you're saying is regardless of the cost, because my no, feeling, I say regardless. I say may, 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 I, may I finish, please? Thank you. My concern is that if we continue testing, at that point, we are committed because I don't know what the problem is. I have the feeling that right now, ignorance is bliss. If it is not in that situation, if it is a major cleanup, once the testing is undertaken, and if it proves that it is no major problem, excuse me, problem, and can be cleaned up for four or $5,000, I, I would agree with you. The problem is, if it happened to be a major environmental issue, and we're into $100,000, which is a possibility, either, so, either way is possible, because I don't know. The testing was inconclusive. Consequently, I have, I have a real major problem saying that, as a town, we're going to accept that, uh, that responsibility. I, I don't know where to go with it. I, I'm, I'm betwixt and between. I, I totally understand where you're coming from, and if it's in the area of 5,000 or less, I was, I'd go with you, totally. But I can't do that with the way that this report reads, and that, that's where my dilemma is, and that's, that, that's the problem I have. I, I say we would be forcing the town into a position of a major cleanup, and that's hypothetical. It might be nothing. I don't know. And that report was so inconclusive, I can't make a, a, an intelligent uh, guesstimate, because I'm not versed in that issue. Well, we'll get a price to find out. They tell us it's going to cost $100,000, and obviously we can't. No, neither of us no, can afford not, to do that. No, that's not what I'm saying, Howard. You're not hearing me. What I'm saying is, once we go with the testing, we are then, I would think, committed to go to DEC. I think that we can hedge the DEC thing right now because we don't have data that says it's a major problem. I don't think we can hedge. If we find out it's a major problem, I think we've got to go. And that, well, that's... How are we going to find that out, Jim? 
I'd say my personal feel. I, I don't know, Howard. I honestly don't. We don't have money in the budget to to do it. We have five thousand dollars. It's more than that. I don't know what we. We do. don't know what it's going to cost. So I think we should pursue it and find out. And if it is uh, too much to bear, then then we have to once build the project. You, once you know what the problem is, this is this is the catch twenty two. Once you know that there is a problem, it has to be reported to the DEC, and then you don't have any options. Well, the DEC is going to know about it now because it'll be in the paper. So. <laughs> Well, well, what we have is some inconclusive uh, reports. Right. So, in other words, you're saying let's kill the whole project because we don't want to find out the worst if it is there. Uh, what I'm saying is that we could potentially, we could, if we could budget it for next year. You got 5000 there now? That would, uh, Howard, the, the, the potential cleanup costs could be in the hundreds of thousands. Could be, but we don't know that. So why are we just writing it off because we, and what, or what might be? I don't understand. May, I, I have a suggestion. May I move to table this and bring it back after we get more data? And I guess I would do that. I would move to table at this point. You move to table resolution number 92-91. I do. For the balance of 90, 1992. No. Well, well no. yes. Let's solve it now. That's my motion. We cannot afford to do it this year. Do I have a second on that? Discussion. All right. A move to table of resolution provides for no discussion. It takes precedent over any other resolutions. I would like to point out a, a vote of yes or aye means to table, so no action will be taken. Vote no means that you want to vote on the resolution number 91. Since there is no discussion allowed, Byron, will you call the town board? Second. Claudia, second. 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 Councilman Ridgeway. Aye. Councilman Rose. No, and I'm not surprised, Dave, you've been critical of this even before you were elected, and I'm not surprised you did this. Councilwoman Smart. Aye. Councilman Warner. No. Supervisor McFarland. Aye. Mr. Supervisor, I'd like to say a word or two, even though you won't open the floor up for discussion. I've been a uh, resident of this town for 40 years. I've never seen a meeting carried on such as you've done tonight or today. I think this people, the people here are, should have an answer to what's going on on the fireman's field. I've been a fireman for 35 years, and I know what's been going on. You don't. You're new in our town. You've only been here a year. You don't know the first thing about the town of Alney and how it operates. And I'm very upset, and I'm sure the people here tonight are upset that you won't give us a final answer. Mr. Rose wants to know what the problem is, if we got one. And I assure you, there is no problem except we burn a few cars up on fire training out there with gasoline and oil in them. There's no contaminants other than that. The DEC, if you want to bring them in, let them bring them in. And if you don't want that park, we let you use it for 20 years or 50 years, whatever the contract calls for. We, the firemen, will take it back if you don't want it and put a fence around it if that's what it takes but there's no cleanup involved and on our part. You signed a contract, we signed a contract in good faith that you would take care of that property at no expense to us. And if you're gonna back down on it, I'm the first one that's gonna go to court and say, you're wrong. And we'll hire, we got an attorney, and we'll fight you every inch of the way. You either find out what's the problem and take care of it, or get out of it, give us back our land. That's all I gotta say. necessary funds to do remedial cleanup. We have a bare bones budget right now. If some extensive cleanup is necessary, nobody can afford to do it. Let's find out. Let's find out what the problem is. 
If you find out, then you are stuck. You have no choice. You are committed. And, and unfortunately, you are committed. Yes, no that's the law. No, that is the law, sir. That's what the super fund is for. No, the no, super sir. fund only pays once all private funds are exhausted. It would be the responsibility of the town, and at this stage, without the necessary funds, we cannot, we cannot afford to do it. It is not to say that it can't be done with, with some funds at the uh, next year. All right, rather than table, Mr. Supervisor, Make a resolution. One of these two gentlemen here, it seems it's a two against three no matter what we do around this town. Let them make a resolution that we turn the land back over to the fire company and drop the whole subject right now and take a loss what you put into in developing the property right now and let the people of the town of Alney go without their town park. Their kids don't need anything. You're willing to take them over to the state or the county and let them use that uh, county park they so-called have got going out there. Go ahead, do that. Put your money out there. Any other uh, new business? I will entertain a motion to elect, is that the right word? Randy Bennett as Recreation Director. Anybody know I'm doing this properly? Uh, I would say a point, but uh, I, uh, I move to do the same. Okay. Uh, you want to move it then? Yes, I, okay. I move it. Do I have a second? One second. For discussion. For discussion. All right. If there's any discussion, let's have it. Randy is here now. I see he just came in a little while ago. Maybe if the board has any questions, they may want to ask him now. I will certainly support this with one stipulation from all others on the board. And that is that this does not establish in any way a precedent regarding the application and applying for positions. I have no problem with Randy. I would probably be the first one to recommend him when the applications and so forth come forth. That is not my concern. As long as this does not establish precedent, I don't have a problem with it. And if we as a board can agree to that, I certainly support it 100%. I can't support it if we're saying that uh, time limits that we establish are going to be waived any time that we feel we want to. And, and that's the only concern that I have on this, is that we had a, an advertisement in the paper, applications must be in by such and such a date, those applications, this application was not received, and that's my only concern. And if the rest of the board will so stipulate that in the minutes that it does not establish precedent, I'm 100% in favor of it, because I have nothing but accolades to give Randy, because he's doing a great job, and I'm really impressed with what he's doing with that group. That's my only concern. That's my only one. Um, if they will accept that as a stipulation. I'll go along with that. So we're not setting a precedent against applicants. Um, I have no problem either. Okay. Um, and, and let the minutes so show. We, do you want the firm wording of the minutes, or can we just kind of vote? Anybody have any objection to just voting on it without? Yeah, and, I have and, no objection. And, right, and no. we'll get the wording in. And, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I would wording. say that doesn't mean we can't be flexible under certain conditions, though. I mean, you know. <laughs> okay. yes. Understood, but I just want to make sure there's no precedent. I don't want a year from now to come back and say, hey, we did it this time, we've got to do it this time, because that's why that stipulation's in there. No past practice. Byron, will you poll the board? Councilman Ridgway. Aye. Councilman Rose. Aye. Councilwoman Smart. Aye. Councilman Warner. Aye. Supervisor McFarland. Aye. Uh, any other new business? Any petitions? Under public comment, is Lisa Chetney here? She asked to uh, speak. She is uh, a resident of Minetto and uh, wanted to speak to us about the uh, 
Help me, somebody. Columbia Mills. Columbia Mills. Columbia Mills cleanup. Thank you. She asked to. Uh, she asked to speak. She's not here. Uh, any other public comment? Yes. Um, I was wondering um, about the county. You were going to meet with the county on their plans for the park. I talked to Legislator Buck. I called him to see if he was coming here tonight, today. He said he had no intentions. He didn't think about it, to be honest with you. And um, so I questioned him before I came to the meeting on the county's plans. The county's park at the airport, I know they're planning on expanding. I asked if they had money budgeted. He said, no, not in a lump sum where it says this is for recreation, that they've had plans, you know, for the past 10 years, and that they're planning on putting in other areas um, out by the Silk Road landfill for the public. And I was wondering if that would be safe, <laughs> considering our, our, you know, with everything that's gone on there, it is a super fun site. Uh, another question I had was this teen dance. I know Mr. Richway bothers you, um, but doesn't, Bows and arrows, you know, and, you know, to me that's a little more dangerous. I mean, I think it's a good thing. I'm not saying I know everything can be organized and need chaperones, but to me, bows and arrows would be just as bad as dancing. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, I was just wondering what what did you get out from the county as far as plans go? You were going to check into that when I last. Uh, basically, the same comments that you have that there is monies, but it is not specifically earmarked for the given project. I believe that the project is going forth. Uh, that's basically all I all that I can give you right at, the, at this particular time. I have been in contact with them, and that's that's basically the information. One other thing, I would comment that uh, the team dance, and if you, if you listen carefully. Uh, I said I had reservations. I certainly wasn't saying that uh, I couldn't support it, but I needed some things checked. Uh, you probably do realize that I've taught middle school for over 30 years, and I have dealt with high school kids and so forth, and to bring uh, three or four or five school districts together needs a great deal of planning, and I talked to this with Randy, and I think that now we have a director, I think we can work, it, work this out, and I think we can, uh, can establish uh, a criteria that is acceptable to you and to me. I think that's true, depending upon the insurance liabilities that Claudia is going to be uh, looking at when the policy comes up for review. Okay, uh, another thing I was wondering, you know, Mr. Buck said, like, you know, and I agree, I think everybody agrees, there's never too many parks. You know, they're always used and stuff. Um, they, they cannot tell us when they're gonna do anything. They, you know, they've said for 10 years it's been in the plans. Um, and he said he supports, you know, if we as the town of Valney want basketball hoops up or whatever, all we have to do is let him know and they'll get it there. And it's like when we've been trying to do something, well, we finally did do something. And he, you know, he said Valney will have preference because it's at the airport in the town of Valney if they want it for a day to just let them know, and it's got to be like after soccer, of course, but um, let him know and he will make sure it's like reserved for the town of Valley if they want it for a specific morning or a day or a special activity, which I think is great since it is in Valley if that's what they're going to do, but what happens if the other 35 legislators want it for a day for their people in their area? I mean, there are only seven days in a week and uh, you know how are we gonna I mean face that there's there is no trust there because we've been promised something for 10 years that hasn't happened yet I was just wondering how you think something like this is gonna work if it's going in with the county other than uh, the information that, that you've got you have basically the same information that uh, that I have I, I believe that the park is is going forth <clears throat> I realize it's been a period of time. I, that's all I can say. I, I can't comment more. Uh, well, the, the um, facilities there, the, I know the uh, buildings, the pavilion and stuff were built, I understand, by the soccer people. The county put in the restrooms, you know, helped with the watering and stuff. 
how would that work as far as if we wanted something, us having the right to use it, if the soccer people say no or they have other plans or whatever at the time? See, that's my concern. There really is no way that we can just use something like that on our own. No. The only suggestion I'm doing is right off the top of my head, which I have, which I should never do. I think now that we have a director and you have a time schedule and so forth, I think that now our director, very possibly the director and I, can make contact with the powers that be at the county and possibly if, if a schedule was needed. Uh, and sometimes we can we can actually uh, discuss this and and we can see what happens. And they can see what happens. That's the only answer I can give you. Well, I, I think the town board should vote to see if there is problems with the land that we have been given to us for dollars because with the land where the county is planning on putting a park for our people, for the county children, is on a Superfund landfill or near it. And I would think we should check and make sure there is a serious problem where that we're planning on putting one and find out for sure whether than question when we already know there is something very dangerous where they are planning one and that's definite that is super fun i'm uh, sure that uh, the dec knows that there is contaminants in the silk mill landfill and what are they doing about it so what would they do with a picky little bit of uh, this park over on the fireman's line do you think they would step in there when there's already that one over the landfill? The Silk Road? Silk Road landfill? That already polluted my land. So uh, what, uh, what do you think? I understood they didn't dare open it up because they didn't know what would happen when all these different chemicals got together. And so the DEC is back straight off. So do you think that they would step in on just a little bit of gasoline and some dirt or something? To answer your question, they would definitely step in if, there, if that soil was contaminated. Very definitely. Well, why don't they do something under the soap now? What world they do? I don't know about that. <laughs> some, somebody suggested to me that we do what the county does, to hire a private consultant that will tell you that there's no hazards or nothing unsafe for the environment or the health of anybody and get them to tell you what you want to hear. That's how they get away. <laughs> and when you uh, when you speak, would you give your name, please? I'm not, I know a lot of oh, people, but not all of you. Everybody knows me. I've been here for years. <laughs> <laughs> my ancestors came to this country in 1560. So, uh, so with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to know. There's a lot of talk about the testing that had been done previously. Apparently you already have some type of model that you've done some testing over there. I guess we're all confused about that. Has there been testing on the soil and who asked for the testing and who paid for it up to this point? Can you answer that? Yes. Okay. The testing was requested by Howard Groves mm -hmm. and the results were uh, submitted and they were inconclusive. I'll, I'll carry that a little bit further if you like. Uh, I've got the letter right here. I did request the testing because a number of people expressed concern about possible contaminants there. And we did find out after talking to the fire department that they did burn some cars there and had some uh, exercises there, the testing and practice and so on. And uh, the only thing that they told us they used were fuel oils, gasoline, this type of thing to get the fires going. So that's why we <coughs> thought we should test this area to see. And it's a confined area. It's just a small area in the middle of the acreage that we were concerned about. And so we contacted Environmental Products and Services out of Syracuse to conduct the testing. They gave us a price of over $600. It came in at about $500 and some dollars. And what they said, and I'll read you their, one of their paragraphs, according to the laboratory report, non-detectable levels of lead, mercury, and PCBs were found in the soil sample. Non-detectable. However, ethyl benzene and xylenes were detected at 2.5 mg and 28 mg, respectively. Since the contaminants reported in this sample were detected in the parts per million range, that there may be significant contamination. Uh, the New York State DEC should be notified of these findings and further sampling should commence. That's what the letter from this uh, service gave us. Uh, it cost us about 500 and some dollars. And they did a, a number of samples. I believe there's about 10 samples taken from different sites around the contaminated area. Um, so that's why I feel that th this may not even be significant. And, um, and how and big an area are we talking about? How big an area? Yeah. Uh, smaller than this room. So 
that, that's where we are right now with it. <clears throat> So is this area, could this be excluded from the park itself? It's almost in the center of the park, so I wouldn't say it could be excluded, but it could be, the soil could be removed if it is contaminated, I believe, and um, brought back into compliance. Um, Randy himself even offered to do the backhoe and the trucking to remove it, uh, so that won't cost us anything. Um, I'm sure other contractors would help out the same if we needed them, uh, because there is uh, an overwhelming interest in this park. I know a lot of people would like to see it through, so I believe that we could handle it for relatively little money, if any at all. And could you also tell us how much money that we put into the park to date? We put about $10,000 between the cost of the fence, um, the uh, uh, abstract surveys that had to be done, um, uh, equipment that we purchased for it, uh, the road that's been put in by the highway department, uh, it's probably exceeded 10000 And that's another reason I hate to see it just go down the tubes right now. Yes. My name is Randy Bennett. Um, I want to thank the board for allowing me to uh, head up this uh, parks and recreation uh, project we're going to have to get into this year. Um, one problem I have and um, with the archery uh, that we are proposing to uh, start a uh, archery group, um, we do not at this time have any place locally except for the park. Uh, that we're working on to shoot the archery. I came out here yesterday and tried to measure off the distances which they, were, they requested. We need uh, at least 140 feet of unimpaired vision for the kids to shoot, plus they have to have a sight area in behind where if an arrow goes astray, I understand they have to have a, a 90 degree angle back there where in case something gets veered off, nobody will get hit. May, may I comment? Yes. Uh, the reason I'd like to comment is that I believe, uh, I don't know if I told you, but I certainly did uh, tell Colleen that uh, I have a lawn space that, depending on insurance regulations, that would be adequate, and I would certainly let you use it. Uh, I have a back lawn that is the size of a regulation baseball field, and that can be used for the archery. As long as the insurance. As long as the insurance. As long as I am cleared of legal and financial responsibility. Right. Where do yes. you live? Where do you live? I live on Town Line Road. Uh, I have over 200 acres, 100 in Scruple, 100 in Volling. My lawn is 400 by 300. That's just the back part of the lawn that I put in as a regulation baseball field for kids. And you certainly the lawn looks like a state park. It is. I have I have an <coughs> adequate space, and I will certainly put that for the archery if it if it goes. Same way they get here. Uh, same exact way they'd get here. If they could get here, they could get there. It's three miles further. Well, that's what we were trying to say at the meeting. We love kids and we want to help the town. This is going to be a big fight. People are going to be making snide comments. We won't do it. No, no we're, we're trying to work this out. We, we're trying to build a base for something for the future. Uh, we've, had, we've had people who want to run a basketball training session. We have a group of people who want to run volleyball want to head the thing and run it themselves through our park and recreations, but they all want us to become a group. And we don't want us to fight with the town or fight with anybody else. This, is, this has got to be a marriage, because if we're going to get, if we have over 300 children that we have cards for right now, and that's not all the ones that, uh, we, that we used uh, the program for last year. A lot of them came to um, events and didn't, weren't even signed up. And uh, so there's a lot of children in the area, and I think that once this uh, uh, new structure gets in, into, uh, into the road of compliance with insurance, um, when people want to do things and want to bring their time and their effort and their money and their experience, as well as their training, like Bob Scott's got, he's got his credentials. Bill, excuse me, I'm sorry, Bill Scott. And so all I can say is that right now we're just, we're just crawling. It's going to take us a while to get all these programs going. Um, over the last three or four weeks, uh, we've had meetings um, with Mr. Ridgway, um, very constructive meetings. We've uh, uh, steered away from a little bit of what we did last year to a more um, solid base working out of the Valley Town Hall with some projects. And I think it's going to help the group versus hinder it. Um, 
we are scheduling right now about 25 outings or projects for the next year. Now we have lost a third of the year almost. By the time we get the okay for everything, uh, we're probably talking eight months left of this year. So um, the only thing I can, I can add is that we really need to have the public come to our meetings and we need to find out about the insurances for our group as well as the people who want to bring their expertise into the group. This isn't costing the town anything to have these people come in. Their, their, their time and their money is coming in. It's free to the town. But we've got to do something to give them a place to do these activities. So uh, within the next month, Mr. Ridgway uh, and uh, my group will be getting together again to come up with a complete list of activities for this year. And uh, I would hope that uh, the, the, um, the children in the town would, uh, would back us like they did last year because we had a great year last year. Um, the kids just, there was times we had 130 children going on an outing. And when they came back and they were screaming and yelling and they had a good time, it was all worth it. Money is no object when you see kids come back and they had such a great, great time the places we went. And I think it's going to happen again this year. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Randy. I think they're uh, well, well, some well, excellent well, ideas. Well, Going that subject with Randy, I, I would like to make some comments on, on the program myself, uh, since I have been doing it for the last two years. Um, uh, as everyone knows, we've had a, an overwhelming response to the program. Uh, but just some figures here I'd like to point out to you. We, for Parks and Recreation, we funded $5,000 this year, and the youth program, $4,555 for a total of $9,555. Now, if you look at the general tax rate for this town, and I'm talking about the general tax, not the highway or the fire, we pay $7.84 per thousand assessed value. And with an average assessment of $3,000 in this town, the average household only pays $23.52 in taxes to this town. Um, and out of that, less than $1 goes towards recreation. Less than $1 per household. And I don't think any of the families of these kids that have been participating in the activities are gonna uh, begrudge us if we increase taxes a little bit, even to cover that if we doubled it, $2 a year. I mean, it's, it's a ridiculously low amount of money for, out of our budget. Um, Last, the last two years, we've had all these events, and it cost us less than $2,500 for the summer program. Now, we did do things in the fall because we realized we had a lot more money to work with than we, than we had thought we would. And so we were able to do things all fall, too, which included some high-ticket items, which I know Jim didn't like, but uh, I know uh, I don't think any kid uh, went away uh, unhappy with the, the Moscow Circus or the, the, the skating, uh, the, the ice capades, or any of those events. Um, and if we can afford to do it, I'd like to see it happen again. And they are educational. Um, also, uh, I, I've been trying to stress all along that volunteerism is the root of this whole project, and we certainly had a lot of dedicated, hardworking people, and I'd hate to discourage them from continuing with our project. Uh, we haven't had this in a long time in this town, and I'd like to see it continue. And um, so I think that we'd be destroying one of our assets right now if we were to effectively kill any of this for recreation. Um, because we may not get these people back. Uh, liability on the teen dance, I know it's always a concern liability. Uh, we had three teen dances here in the last year and a half, and only one of them did we have any problems whatsoever, and there was some minor vandalism that was uh, rectified, uh, and that was from kids from outside the town. Unfortunately, they came here, some older kids that uh, uh, we just couldn't monitor because we were shorthanded that night. But that doesn't mean that has to happen again. We can have a constable here. We can have more volunteers here. Um, but the liability on the teen dance is, it should be real minor compared to the liability of uh, DA night here when we get a lot of people in here that are undesirables to, to a great degree that could do a lot more damage to this town hall. And no one seems to be concerned about that. Um, uh, so, and as far as the highway department goes and in being involved with this park, I know it's been mentioned about the maintenance on the park. Well, the only maintenance that I can see once it's constructed, which again, we're hoping to do with volunteers, as Randy has pointed out and I've pointed out, uh, so the expense of the town is going to be minimal. Um, the highway department already mows the cemeteries. They, they cut the grass on the sides of the road. I don't think this would be a, a big chunk out of their time to have to mow the lawn at the park uh, once every couple weeks or so. Um, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, but once again, we got to provide a facility. That's the only way this program is going to expand. Uh, in the past, we did talk to some other people about Archie. It might have been people from your group, I'm not sure, because uh, Robin Cooper was dealing with it. But we, we were counting on seeing something like that happen this year. Uh, unfortunately, Robin uh, left us last year, so 
Uh, he didn't work on that anymore. But like Randy said, we've had people who want to run a volleyball program from the Fulton Volleyball Association out here for the kids and the adults. We've had the Junior Baseball League in contact with us in the past wanting to uh, set up leagues out here. Uh, we've had uh, junior or knee high basketball that has wanted to get involved out here in the summer program. So there's a lot of opportunities that are available to us if we pursue them. And uh, I submit once again, political will is the only thing in the way of seeing this project through. And I'm just going to ask the board to please consider it and uh, do what's best for the town. Uh, one other question on the agenda. Uh, could someone explain to me again the policy for getting on the agenda? Um, I, I remember something about that we had to have something submitted on Tuesday, but I thought there was some flexibility there. Um, and the reason I'm asking this is because Randy did ask Jim Ridgway at our, our meeting a few weeks ago about being on the agenda, and I remember you telling him, Jim, that you wanted to see a copy of what he was going to have on the agenda first so you could review it beforehand. I don't know why that's necessary. I think someone should just be able to get on the agenda without having to see what they have. Uh, as, as an individual, certainly. And I, did, I, I thought we were talking as a uh, recreation town board liaison. I, being the liaison, mm -hmm. needed to know those particular things and felt that it certainly was within, uh, within the confines that I would have there and within the parameters of the liaison's responsibility. Uh, as an individual, uh, people, I believe the process is uh, prior to Tuesday, Simply call the clerk uh, to get on the agenda. Is that correct, Byron, or am I wrong? Well, he's a worker. Or supervisor. Day, actually, he puts it together, and I type it. That's all. Well, I know Randy was a day late again, but he was refused to be on the agenda, and I, I think we should be flexible on that, especially since he did ask you three weeks ago, and we've been talking about it all along. And, um, all uh, printed two days before he called. Well, I don't see why it has to be printed. We can pencil it in the day of if we right. had to. That's right. up to somebody else to pencil it in. Well, the intent certainly was not to not allow Randy to speak. And if Randy came and I believe, I'm not sure, but I believe Byron probably said that he could do it during public comment. Is that correct, Byron? Yes, yes, I did. Okay, and so public comment and Randy was given the floor and we certainly would not exclude anyone from, uh, from speaking. That wasn't wasn't the intent, obviously. So our policy is you have to have it in by Tuesday, the two days before the meeting, or if it's not, if it's a Saturday meeting, it has to be in by Thursday. Is that it? <coughs> the request to be on the agenda has to be two days prior to the meeting. No fixed rules. No fixed rules. It, it's anybody can stand up during the. Uh, so he couldn't be here originally for public comment. That's why he wanted to be on the agenda. He made arrangements this morning so he could be here towards the end of the meeting, only because he knew he couldn't speak earlier. But. You know, I, I don't think he should have to do that because I don't see any reason why we should exclude anybody from the agenda. Uh, I mean, procedures are one thing, but I think we should be flexible in some of these things. Sir? Sure. Yes. Hi. Um, my name is Colleen Scott. This is my husband, Bill Scott, over here. Um, we want to start a, a JOAD club in the town of Valney. Um, JOAD stands for Junior Olympic Archery Development. Um, I don't know if you have seen articles in the paper about our daughter, Jamie. She's really involved. She won gold me er, silver medals at the Empire State Games for two years in a row. Um, she's competed nationally for the last three years. And um, this is just something that my husband and I have wanted to do for a long time. Um, Joad is um, it's nice. Um, there's little achievement badges that they get as they shoot better and better. Um, we can get grants from the National Archery Association um, for equipment, targets, for travel, for whatever. Um, they've already handed out the grants for 1992, but I'm going to check into the deadline for 1993. So um, we wouldn't necessarily have to get all the money for JOAD from the town of Olney. We could get some from the National Archery Association if our grant is approved. <laughs> also, what Jim was talking about, they have a new program now where they they loan a, a kit to new JOAD clubs, and um, it's for a period of six months. It's 12 bows, it's arrows, <laughs> arm guards, um, finger tabs, everything you can imagine you need. Not targets, though. That's the only thing. Um, I called... Mr. Brown, who lives in California, yesterday <laughs> and talked with him about it. Um, the only thing that he said was that 
they would want my husband to attend one more training class before they would loan us this kit because this is from Easton, who is a manufacturer of arrows. Um, another thing is um, kids, if they if they get real well with their shooting, they can be asked to join the junior elite team and they can compete internationally for the United States. Um, there's also uh, the United States archery team when they get older. Um, there's the Empire State Games. And um, archery is a lifetime sport. The national champion in the women's was 18. And the national champion for the men is over 50. So it's something that you can learn when you're little and you can do for the rest of your life. Um, it's just something that Bill and I want to do and, and we thought that it would be nice for the recreation program so that the kids were learning something as well having, as having fun and going on field trips, but this way they'd be learning something that they could enjoy for the rest of their lives. So I guess that's all I have to say. If anybody has any more specific questions, they can ask me after the meeting. Thank you very much, Colleen. That sounds like a good program. Any other uh, public comment? Yes. My name is Donna Kessner. Um, I, I, you said that Mr. McFarland, you said that Mr. Ridgway had correspondence from children for the recreation program. Could I ask you to read that? Uh, I feel very strange because I left one of the, the other bag in which I've got all my other books, and that's what I was hunting for. I left it sitting next to my aquarium, and that's where it is right now. And I apologize, and I apologize for that. I'm, I'm sorry. It, it was an error. I, I, it's in my bag. And as you can see, I carry an abundance of stuff, and I just ran out in the snow, and I, I forgot it. I, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Very nice letters. I'm just going to, uh, I think it's a very good idea. They want to start an archery program at Valnet. I think that's a great idea. Anything they're going to do for the kids, I think that we're all in favor of it. Nobody's objecting to that. I think the only concern is, as you've heard from all of us, is that we feel that there needs to be a place. There was a recreation program when Jim was involved a few years ago, and he knows himself the problems that we had using the town hall here during the summer with the highway trucks coming in and out. It's a very hazardous place to be having children hanging around the town hall and to have a park or some type of place or facility for the archery or whatever you're going to start, it's obvious that we need it. And as far as money being um, projected for the county park, I've talked to a couple legislators in Fulton, and they have told me at this time there is no money budgeted for a park. There is, and they are, part, they are not even considering going into the business of youth programs. That's one of the reasons they got out of the nursing home, because they just wanted to get away from the nursing home and the youth programs. So I think that what we need to have done here is invite Legislator Buck to come here and give us a full-scale report on what is exactly budgeted for the park, if there is or if there's not, and let's clear up this controversy about a county park once and for all. And if there's not, I think that we should proceed with a town park, if not with the fire department, which I think is ridiculous, seeing that they've already donated the land to us at no cost. I, I can't see just a, if there is some contaminants, fine. Let's get to it. Let's find out what it is. And as far as the DEC, if they have to be brought in, there's no cost for them to come in. Let them come in. And then I, I can't believe there's going to be this escalated cost for cleanup. And if, they, if you choose not to do this, if you're not going to develop the park this year, then maybe you ought to take Mr. Hawksey's suggestion, give it back to the fire department, and let the town consider doing it on their own as, as a committee, maybe not even involving the town. Let it just be a citizen's group with the fire department. Thank you for your comments. Uh, maybe your uh, Bill Buck is here uh, for the next meeting. Yes. Uh, Christine Rose, and I'd also like to say something about the park, and that is, if we know there is a problem there, I think the town board has has to notify the DEC and, and have them come in. I mean, it's like you think you're sick, but you're afraid to go to the doctors because he's going to tell you there's something wrong with you. I think that it is the obligation of the board to contact the DEC. And I don't have a whole lot of faith in the DEC personally, but I do think that if there's a problem out there, it should be looked at, and it could be very minor. It could be something that could be taken care of, and I, I agree that... Somebody somewhere doesn't want the kids in this town to have a park, but I don't think it's because of the kids personally. I think it is political. Boy, I'll be the last one to have something for the children.
more children involved than any other of the towns. I didn't know a doctor made the comment that all the children were in the town of Bali, but <laughs> that's where they were. The other towns didn't have them like Bali. So. I have one last quick comment. Um, also concerning the recreation, uh, I guess the recreation committee was told that they can't use the copier that's only for town use, which I understand. But I'd like to ask why it is Who on Monday. That? Is that what was told, Randy, that they understand that? Robin told me that we weren't allowed to use it last year. We were not allowed to use it any time he wanted to. Well, he did. He's not the recreation committee. He's the recreation director that was well, by the town. It never came out of the uh, out of the office in there. Okay. Well, I just want to understand the policy on that because I know on Monday nights during uh, the court night uh, that all these attorneys are in here using that copier to the hill for their own personal use. And if, if we're going to eliminate other people, especially our rec committee, from using it, I think that the attorneys should be addressed uh, also. It certainly never came out of my office. I'll assure you that. No one's pointing any fingers. We just want to know the policy on it so in the future that we know where Nobody's we're been denied access to that guy that came in the front door and asked. I don't know why you're saying that, Howard. Uh, I went in and uh, turned on the copier and, no. and, and they used it. Right. Fine. Well, you no problem. And, you were there and did it, though. But before that, we were told that we couldn't, and that's what came well, down last told? year. Well, Randy said Robin told us Robin told us last year the meeting we had in there. Well, Robin tells you. Us to do then? Uh, oh, told them. He told them. He oh, told okay. me. <laughs> I wasn't. Nobody's at fault. No, it's a fault. Just misunderstanding. Okay. No, that's, that's all. Just asking what the policy is. If they can use it or if they can't. And if they can't, uh, where do we draw the line on who does use it and who doesn't? I, mean, I don't think people can come in on the street and use right. it, but I exactly. don't think anybody on town business. Of course well, we have a policy of 25 cents a copy, I believe, but I would assume that's limited to you know, someone coming out the street and not citizens of the town who are working in conjunction with the town to, you know, proceed with the project. Okay. okay. I just want to have an understanding on that. Also, I've warned Jim about uh, donating your private property for uh, use for rec program because next thing you know, they want Jim to swim in your pool. Thank you very much for attending on this snowy day. And uh, I'd like to mention that we will be auditing bills April 7 at 7 p.m. The regular board meeting will be the Thursday, April 9 at 7 p.m. And then there will be a public disclosure meeting on data collection and revaluation on April 16, also at 7 p.m. Uh, I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Byron, will you call me? Ridgeway. Aye. Council Monroe. Aye. Councilwoman Hart. Yeah, Councilwoman Smart. Aye. Councilman Warner. Aye. Supervisor Nick Farrell. Aye. We stand adjourned. Can I ask a question for everyone there? Do you like the Saturday morning meetings most of all? I do. But I don't know anyone else. No? Okay. I got to see your kids in the high school right now. Oh, okay, because I, I, I just... I go. Go.